Today I'm going to show you how I save apple seeds for propagation. It's uh, very specific but very simple. All of these apples here are intentional cross-pollinations, meaning that I took the pollen of one parent and put it onto the blossoms of another parent in order to breed new varieties of apples. So we're going to go pick a few more of those. I'll show you the process real quick, which is uh, won't take long. And then I may talk a little bit about recommendations for sprouting the seeds in the spring, because I know some people have had trouble with that, and I had some promising results this spring with uh, an experiment I did. And uh, after we get all that technical stuff out of the way for anyone who's interested, I'll go through some of these crosses and talk about them. Uh, why I made them and maybe show some of the parents and stuff. Okay, so here we have uh, Sam Young, and it looks like most of the cross-pollinations I made didn't make it. Um, so this one is Sam Young crossed with, with uh, Allen's Everlasting, which just seems kind of like a no-brainer cross to make. This is with Pink Parfait, looking pretty rotten, but there could be some good seeds in there. Just make sure these are labeled. Black Strawberry, interesting. These will be, oh, interesting, Big Red, a red-fleshed apple of my own breeding, and that's it. So there are some more cross-pollinated apples up in here, but these ripen super late. So if I harvest them now, the seeds may not be ripe. So let's save some seeds from this uh, black strawberry apple here. And the supplies we need besides the apple are a small paring knife, or you can use a very thin bladed butter knife, which will help prevent uh, damaging the seeds. Once we get the seeds out, a small dish with some hydrogen peroxide. This is just the regular, what is it, 2% or 1% or something. Whatever they sell at the store for disinfecting cuts and stuff. Some scratch paper for blotting out the seeds and drying them. A small fork. This is for getting the seeds out of the dish, which is harder than you might think by other means. And you can also, like if you're only doing a few, you could just take this and dump it in a little a strainer, like a tea strainer or something, screen. Um, but I use this fork because it has really closely spaced tines and it's pretty easy to rake them out. And then I can use this peroxide again. I'll use it like uh, three or four times usually before I change it. Make sure you label it. We're gonna go black strawberry is the seed parent. Seed parent always goes first. X, cherub. And then once the seeds are dry, we need a little baggie to put them in. So in most apples, the seeds are a little bit below center line. So if that's center, I'm going to drop down just a hair. So maybe like in fifths, maybe not quite that far. Real close to the core without nicking the seeds. And then I'm going to twist it. Oh, look at that cool pattern. That's neat. It looks like we got a good seed set. We throw them in this peroxide and they don't have to sit in here for any length of time at all. I have left them like sometimes I'll just forget and walk away for a couple of hours and they end up bleached out and looking like lighter in color. I don't know if it hurts them. It probably doesn't. Okay, so I'm just going to rake these out here. They're still really wet, right? So that peroxide is actually going to work for a while while they're drying off. And if you want them to dry faster, you can just move them a couple of times to different parts of the paper. Okay, so I'm gonna put a weight on that so it doesn't blow away out here. I use these little Ziploc bags because uh, I just bought like a thousand of them or something. If I dried these seeds on the outside, which I did, and I know that there was no moisture and I never see any moisture inside of this bag, then I know that moisture is staying in here because this bag is sealed. So I know the seeds are staying fresh and plump and I know that's what they need in order to um, chill. So they need to accumulate some hours of chill in order to um, sprout in the spring. So they think that they've gone through a winter, basically. You want to trick them into thinking they've gone through a winter, which they have, of course, but just in the fridge. And uh, they're ready to go. So they're nice and fresh and plump. And I try to get all the pulp off. So if I see any bits of pulp or like a seed with some pulp stuck to it, I'll try to scrape it off because I don't want that in here because if that gets any moisture on it, it's very likely to grow some mold. So I've nuked all the, you know, fungus and bacteria on the outside of the seeds. I've gotten rid of any moisture that they might end up being like uh, sitting in like a drop of water or something. And now I can just put them in the fridge. So I'm gonna label that with a Sharpie and that just goes in the fridge and gets ignored until it's uh, time to plant them. But this is really cool, right? Isn't that pattern cool? 
Okay, so mostly what I've done is um, I try to start the seeds early, but I often don't get to it early enough. And I'll put them in an unheated greenhouse in the flats and then just, you know, keep them watered and wait till they come up. But I have had mixed results with that. And I had one year that was really bad. And in, in particular, like a couple of different crosses where the seeds seemed perfectly healthy, but they just didn't seem to want to sprout. And I've heard of, uh, you know, other people write me and say they've had some problems with germination. So this spring I had a leftover bag of open pollinated apple seeds. And I thought I'd just do an experiment that I've wanted to try for a while. So I made a compost tea by just steeping a little bit of compost in water, pouring it off, filtering it so that, you know, I wasn't getting a bunch of gunk in there, like bits of stuff. I think I put it through a coffee filter even. And then I just soaked the seeds in that overnight in the refrigerator, drain them out, and then I, you know, put them into damp charcoal. So just some crushed up charcoal. The charcoal is like, um, a moisture moderator, right? So if any moisture leaves the apple seeds, or, or is on the outside, the, the, the charcoal will sort of like absorb that a little bit if it's damp, not, not wet. Like you don't want it wet, you just want it damp. And it just makes sure that the seeds are sitting against a damp medium too. And those things sprouted like, you know, 98% or something were sprouted within a couple of weeks. And most of them sprouted, started sprouting within a week. And I sprouted them in the fridge uh, in that crushed charcoal. So I'll talk more about this probably in the spring, but for now, that's what I would recommend trying because it works so well for me. Apparently they sprout more reliably under refrigeration or in the cold, but a little bit slower. But these things really leapt right out because I think, you know, they receive the message by getting all these nutrients from the compost tea. I mean, the seeds are going to swell up with all that nutriment and they're going to want to grow. And that, that was my theory and it seemed to hold true. And then once they grow just like a little tail, you're off and you can, you can take them out and plant them a, a flat or pots or in the ground or whatever you want. Okay, let's talk about a few of these crosses. So it's getting exciting because I'm able to use a lot of my crosses now in breeding. Um, so for instance, this one right here is actually a cross between two of my apples. So this is cherub. It's this little red flush crab. As you can see, the skin is fairly red. And this is a cross between King David and um, Grenadine. So these are King Davids, but they don't have the super dark red uh, skin that King David usually has. Uh, actually, there's some up here. Let's just go pick one. Okay, so you can see how dark these are. This is more what I expect from King David. Okay, this will be fun. Let's uh, map this out. So here's Wixen, and I crossed Wixen with this little, this isn't really ripe yet, but it's a red fleshed apple called Rubiot. And that created, so then we took King David plus Grenadine. Now this is a red fleshed apple, but it's not ripe yet at all. So it's not gonna be, this gets way redder, believe it or not. It's like yeah, dark pink. Okay, so here's the lineage. We took this little uh, tasty crab apple called Wixen, crossed it with Rubiot, ended up with this pink fleshed uh, crab apple named Cherub. We took King David plus Grenadine, and that equals black strawberry. And now we've taken black strawberry as the seed parent and crossed it with Cherub, and that will equal whatever these turn out to be. Like, look at the potential here. We have this complex parentage with all of these very interesting apples, with some very interesting offspring already that you know have very unique traits. This is the most strawberry tasting apple I've ever had before. It's got this incredible dark you know, skin that really even is darker than most of the King Davids, but you can see the similarity. And now we've crossed those two things with two red fleshed apples with interesting characteristics into whatever these might come out to be like. It's just, this is why I do this. Because once you start to realize the potential and, you know, I could just, I can see the potential and you're always curious like what's around the next corner or over the next uh, hill. The next stuff used in breeding may be, you know, something from one of these two. Um, I'm So I have increasingly have used a lot of my own stuff, especially black strawberry and cherub are real big in my uh, current breeding. So, so all of these here, are pollinated with pollen blends. So I've made a blend of late hanging pollen, so apples that hang past Christmas basically into December at least. 
So all of these are pollinated with a red flesh blend, only red fleshed apples, and this one's pollinated all with early apples. And all of these are sweet 16. So sweet 16 just has uh, special flavor characteristics that um, I haven't really tasted in anything else. So some years I'll just kind of lean in heavily into uh, one variety like the Sweet 16 here. This year I just did a ton of those. Uh, I did a lot of King David this year. I did a lot of Pink Parfait as usual. That's kind of a standard, but it's not ripe until much later. And there are also a lot more black strawberry crosses uh, still hanging on the tree. And they're they're actually just starting to ripen right now. They're not really ripe yet, but the, they're ripe enough that the seeds are mature. So yeah, I mean, a lot of these are pollinated with, uh, here's King David with black strawberry. So again, I'm kind of like back breeding a King David cross back to King David just to see what happens. Here's uh, King David with Appaloosa. So Appaloosa is another one of my red fleshed apples because I have this theory that very dark red apples like King David here, uh, I think there's a synergistic effect between these really dark, especially these black skinned apples. I, I suspect there may be a synergy between them and the red fleshed apples that are going to encourage um, offspring that is more likely to have red flesh and dark red skin. We'll see. So far that seems to be proving out, but I don't really have enough data yet. Another thing I did is I took just really strongly flavored apples like Allen's Everlasting and uh, crossed them with uh, Sweet 16 because I'm just trying to take more really strongly flavored apples and cross them together. Hard Candy Cider crossed with Sam Young. Like there's two uh, very richly flavored, very fruity, strong flavored apples. This is uh, Ross non Paray with Hard Candy Cider, which is another one of my apples. Okay, I'm gonna get busy. As you can see, I have my work cut out for me. The seeds will be available sometime between like mid and late winter. I may hold them until the scions are ready to send out, uh, but I'm not quite sure yet. Yeah, and don't write me about them. You can't get on a list or anything like that. It's first come, first serve, except that uh, my patrons over on Patreon always get first pick of anything that's of limited quantity, except for the uh, scions that I need to auction off uh, that are super high dollar. Um, but although you may get a discount on those um, if you bid. So yeah, just watch social media, Facebook, mostly Instagram, uh, my subscribe to my blog, uh, watch YouTube, and you'll get some kind of announcement between all those things about uh, what, when the seeds are ready to go out. And just remember, this is a lot of fun, but it does take a long time. So you could be looking at uh, five to ten years for these seeds to actually produce fruit that we get to try. These could produce very, very different apples. Um, you'll see a lot of traits in common, like let's take a look here at King David grenadine producing black strawberry. So we have the same dark red flesh, but look at those speckles. You see all those speckles? Well, that comes from grenadine. So it got the dark red skin, of King David, the red flesh of grenadine, and the speckles of grenadine. And with cherub, you can see some similarity in like the skin and the shape of um, this compared to Rubiot. And then Wixen, it got the size, high sugar content of Wixen, and some of the special uh, savory malty flavor of Wixen as well, as well as the red flesh of Rubiot and some of the fruity flavor of Rubiot and other weird things like it has uh, sometimes a little bit of rose flavor or a taste of like burnt sugar. It's an odd bird. This is a, a strange tasting apple sometimes. Okay, I have my work cut out for me, so I'm gonna get busy on all this. And uh, thanks for watching.